Hey guys, what's up? This is Vicious Vanity Effects and I am going to be showing you a little bit about my sculpting and molding for uh, the project that I'm doing for Dark Beauty Magazine. So the first thing that I'm going to be showing is sculpting in wed clay. I've basically blocked out my form already and right now I'm just getting into a little bit more of the detail of the forms and kind of, you know, figuring out exactly where those things should lay. I'm changing the nose a little bit. Uh, I didn't really like the way it looked. It was sitting a little too high, so I'm lowering the nose, just kind of um, refining that and making sure that my forms are all there before I head into detail. So now I'm happy with my form. I'm gonna be adding wrinkle detail and skin texture. I'm doing that with just a sharp sculpting tool and I'm scratching in where I want the wrinkles to be. And then I'm going back with just a brush and a little bit of water and smoothing those out. And then going back, scratching more in, and smoothing out. It's kind of back and forth, back and forth the way I like to do it, just so that there's layers of wrinkles instead of just, you know, one scratching in there. I just use a regular makeup brush and a little bit of water and it seems to smooth out the wrinkles really well. You know, the thing about wood clay is, you know, it's a water-based clay, so it's a lot easier to smooth down than an oil-based clay or anything like that, just because you can use water and spray it and um, make it a little bit softer. And then you can also dry it out a little bit with uh, like a heat gun or a blow dryer, and you'd get a rougher surface where you can do um, even further detail after your, your wrinkles and, and all that stuff is done. So I, I think the thing that I have like the most issue with is um, trying to find a nose shape on most of my sculptures. It's like, you know, brows and, and cheekbones are, you know, always kind of the same form, but a nose can be many different things. So, you know, making sure that your nose is exactly what you're envisioning is, is really important to the overall look of the whole character. So now I'm going in and I'm doing pore definition and I'm just doing some final touches on the sculpture and making sure that it's ready to be molded. For the pores I just like to use a little rounded tool and just press dots into there and then I kind of go back and smooth those out. Another way you can do this is just lay down some plastic over the sculpture and then use your tool so it's already kind of softened. You know, sometimes I use that, sometimes I don't. But, um, I just think that's a good way to get it smoothed out. Texture is really important in your sculpture for anything that's going on the face. I mean, no, no face is completely smooth, so it's really important to find something that you can use, whether it's a texture stamp or a chip brush or a sponge or, you know, whatever it is that you see that you think would give the, the overall look a good texture. For this, I'm uh, just using a chip brush. Um, I'm also using different sponges that are a little bit hardened, and I'm just kind of tapping them on the sculpture. So it blends over the skin a little bit better. So now I'm moving on to flashing, and then I'm gonna be releasing uh, the whole sculpture. But the flashing is used just to make sure that um, my prosthetic comes out with thin edges. The flashing wall is right next to the thinnest portion of my sculpture, and some of the live cast underneath is being revealed on thin edges around that. So that way I know that the negative and the positive are going to touch down on those spots and not leave any room for any product to sit in, which makes edges small. So now moving on to the molding phase, I'm using UltraCal 30. Uh, it's a powder at first and you mix it in with water and then it eventually will turn to stone. You wanna evenly distribute the powder into the bowl. Uh, so I like to spin my bowl as I'm putting the powder in and mix it up and just make sure that it's completely evenly mixed and there's no clumps or anything like that. Uh, you want it to be kind of like a pancake batter consistency, a little liquidy, just so that you can do your beauty coat. The first coat is what we call you know, the beauty coat and that's, that's just to ensure that we're capturing all the detail of our sculpture. And that's the most important part. So when you do the beauty coat, you wanna make sure that you're going back over with a brush and just getting in all those little cracks and crevices of where you know, an air bubble might 
hide. Um, and I also like to tap the table and, you know, I'll use a hammer or rubber mallet or whatever is laying around and just to try to get those bubbles to rise up out of it. And then you just basically, once that beauty coat's done, you just keep layering and layering the Ultra Cow. And then you're pretty much done. You wait for it to dry and then you uh, pry the mold open. And then we're going to be moving on to the next phase, which is running foam, which will be in my next video. That'll be part two.